What's up, gang? I'm going to paint a little picture for you. Last week, everything in your code base was working A-OK. -okay. Today, you've got a bug. Maybe you discovered it, maybe somebody reported it to you, but you have no idea when or where things went wrong. If you've ever had this happen, then I got the workflow for you. Today, we're going to talk about using Git Bisect to automatically find where a bug was introduced, and then we're going to talk about automating that automation. So let's go. Here, we have our program. What it does is it gives you the Scrabble score for any word you want to pass in. We can test it out here, and we have a problem though. Vim is actually an eight point word in Scrabble, and we're only getting back five. So we've got a bug. But we knew that at one point it was giving us the correct score. So how are we supposed to figure this out? We could look at our code and try to just figure out what went wrong and try to debug the old fashioned way. And sometimes that'll be just fine. But Maybe this is code you're not familiar with. Maybe it's a big project and a lot of things changed and everything you're looking at seems like it should be fine. Now you need to call in the big guns. Here's where git bisect comes in. We're gonna run git bisect start to enter this bisect mode. Now we're gonna say git bisect bad to indicate that the current commit is bad. And now we're gonna look at our log here and we know that at this commit, our scores were correct. So we're gonna say git bisect good with the commit hash to let it know that this was our last good commit. So we're telling Git that the bug is somewhere in between these two points. Now what's going to happen is Git is going to check out a commit halfway between this. It's going to use a little binary search and now we can run our test again and we see that it's still the incorrect value. So we're going to say Git bisect bad, letting it know that this commit is also bad. It's going to check out another commit. We're going to do the same thing. Here we can see that our value is correct. We're going to say git bisect good. And it's going to continue to go on either half, narrowing it down until we realize this is the commit that introduced the problem. And if we look here, we can see that when we were refactoring this, V is only worth one point when it should be worth four. If the range that you're working over isn't crazy large, you can go ahead and just manually do these checks to see if your bug is still there. But if it's something that can be automated, we probably should. So we're going to start the same way, git bisect start. We're going to say that master is bad. We're going to say that our last commit here is good. And now we're going to use git bisect run. And we're actually going to just run our Scrabbler test. And this is just some code that's going to return a one if the value is incorrect. Otherwise, it's going to return a zero. And git bisect run will automatically handle each of these steps for you. So you don't have to manually check to see if the bug is still there. This is great if you can add a test that will reveal the bug and then automatically let your test runner go through. Most test runners will return a zero if everything's okay, a one if there's a failing test. And if for whatever reason that commit that gets checked out can't actually build, you can return a special code for that. That way Git knows just to skip on over. So we run that and immediately we found our culprit right away. This is a game changer if you're working across a large range of commits, maybe from one release to another, or if each check takes a long time, you know, you have to install and build a bunch of dependencies, the compile time is long. You can set this up, hit run, go get a coffee, come back, the bug's found for you. All right, there you have it. Now you know how to use git bisect to narrow down exactly where a problem get introduced and figure out who to throw under the bus. Peace.